October 1933, Trossingen, Baden-Württemberg, Germany. Brahms Lullaby Lullaby and good night, with pink roses bed eight, with lilies o'erspread is my baby's wee bed. Lay thee down now and rest, may thy slumber be blessed. Lay thee down now and rest, may thy slumber be blessed. Chapter One of Echo by Pan Yunos Ryan In a town between the Black Forest and the Swabian Alps, Friedrich Schmidt stood on the threshold of his half-timbered house, pretending to be brave. From his vantage, he looked across the rooftops of Trossingen, toward the castle-like factory looming above the town. Within its walls, a smokestack rose higher than the tallest gable and puffed a white cloud, a beacon against the gray sky. Father stood behind him in the doorway. Son, you know the way. We've talked in hundreds. We've walked it hundreds of times. Remember, you have as much right to be on the street as the next person. Uncle Gunter will be waiting for you at the front gates. Friedrich nodded and stood taller. Don't worry, Father. I can do it. He wanted to believe his own words, that something as simple as walking to work by himself would be easy, that he wouldn't need Father's hawk-like presence shielding him from the frightened or steering him around the gawkers. Friedrich took a few steps toward the street and then turned to wave. Father's hair billowed from his head in a gray halo, giving him a wild look. It suited him. He raised his hand in return and smiled at Friedrich. But it wasn't his usual jovial smile. It was half-hearted and worried. Were those tears in his eyes? Friedrich went back and pulled him into a hug, inhaling his persistent smell of beau rosen and anise lozenges. I'll be fine, father. It's your first day of retirement and you should enjoy it. Will you join the pigeon feeder feeders? Father laughed, holding Friedrich at arm's length. Heavens no! Do I look like I'm ready for the park bench? Friedrich shook his head, happy he lightened the mood. What will you do with your time? I hope you'll think about performing again. Long ago, Father had played cello for the Berlin Philharmonic, but he set aside that life when he married and had children, taking a more practical job at the factory. Shortly after Friedrich was born, Mother died, and Father was left to raise him and his sister Elizabeth alone. I won't likely perform with an orchestra, said Father, but don't you worry. I'll have plenty to keep me busy. My books, my cello students, concerts. And I intend to start a chamber music ensemble. Father, you have the energy of three men. That is a good thing with your sister coming home today. Elizabeth will fill our house with directives, and I'll need stamina for that, to be sure. I intend to convince her to take up the piano again, so we can resume our Friday get-togethers, beginning tonight. I miss them. Friedrich missed those evenings, too, for as long as he could remember every Friday after dinner, Uncle Gunter, Father's younger brother, came for dessert and brought his accordion. Father played cello, Friedrich harmonica, though in truth cello was his instrument, too. And Elizabeth played piano. Father and Elizabeth would argue about everything, from the choice of songs to the order in which they were played. Friedrich had given up trying to determine whether Elizabeth and Father were opposites in nature or simply alike. Still, those were his happiest memories. The polkas, the folk songs, the spontaneous singing and laughing, even the bickering. Now Elizabeth would be home from nursing school for three whole months. He couldn't wait for their late-night talks or passing a novel back and forth and taking turns, reading it out loud and their Sunday afternoon card games of binocle around the kitchen table with Father and Uncle Gunter. The past year hadn't been the same without Elizabeth's mothering and bossing and cooking. His mouth watered just thinking about her cooking. Do you think she missed us as much as we missed her? asked Friedrich. Father smiled. How could she not? He pointed Friedrich toward the street and patted his back. Have a good day at work, son, and don't forget to... I know, Father. Look up. Chapter 2 When Friedrich was around the corner, he did the opposite. 
He shoved his hands into his pockets, hunched his shoulders, and tilted his right cheek toward the ground. Father would never have tolerated this posture, but it made Friedrich feel less conspicuous, even if he was more vulnerable to things in his, in his path. Besides, he often found a lost fennig while looking down. Soon enough, he stumbled over a bundle of newspapers that had been tossed toward a storefront. He braced himself on the building and read the headline. Parliament passes law. Friedrich groaned. Another law for father to criticize. Since Friedrich didn't attend regular school, father insisted they read the newspaper together every night as part of his studies. He could not count the times in recent months that father had tossed the paper aside, disgusted with the new chancellor, Adolf Hitler, and his Nazi party. Father had been a member of the German Free, Th Free Thinkers League until a few months ago, when Hitler outlawed the organization. Just last night, after reading yet another article, Father had paced the kitchen and ranted, Is there no room in this country for more than one way of thinking? Hitler bullies the parliament to make laws on whims. Hitler takes away all civil rights and gives his stormtroopers the freedom to question anyone for any reason. Hitler wants to cleanse the population for a pure German race. What did it all mean? What was a pure German race? Clear-skinned and perfect? Friedrich touched his face and felt his stomach tighten with worry, especially since he was neither. He ran his fingers through his hair, which did him no service. It was thick and blonde and tightly curled. He could feel it frizzing in the damp air, just like his father's. No matter how long he let it grow, it stuck out instead of down. If only he had straight hair, he could let it drape across his cheek. But there was no hiding his blotchy birthmark. It was as if an imaginary line had been drawn down the middle of his face and neck. And on one side, his skin was like everyone else's. But on the other, a painter had dabbed shades of purple, red, and brown turning his cheek into a mottled plum. He knew he looked horrid. How could he blame people for staring or being frightened? At the next corner, he turned down the thoroughfare. When he reached the music conservatory, he could hear someone practicing the piano in an upper story, Beethoven's for release. For this, he stopped and lifted his head, becoming lost in the music. Unconsciously, his hand rose and bounced, to the theme of the song. Friedrich smiled as he pretended the musician was following his direction. He closed his eyes and imagined the notes sprinkling down and washing his face clean. A car horn startled him. He shoved his hands into his pockets, lowered his head, and resumed walking. He kicked at a rock in his path, feeling the familiar mix of hope and dread. His audition at the conservatory, for which he'd been preparing for as long as he had memory, was just after the new year. What if he did not perform well? Yet, which would be worse, to be accepted or refused? A weight pressed on his heart. How could he want something and fear it so much at the same time? He took a deep breath and kept walking. As he approached the schoolyard, he gave himself his usual lecture. Don't look, don't pay attention. He tried to bolster himself with the things father always said. One foot in front of the other. Keep moving forward. Ignore the ignorant. But without father at his side, his heart pounded and his breathing quickened. He faltered and glanced up. A group of boys huddled together on the steps, pointing at him, snickering, and making faces in mock horror. He shaded his face with his hand, hung his head took longer strides, weaving around people until he was running. Friedrich! He almost fell over Uncle Gunter. Good morning, nephew! He put an arm around Friedrich's shoulder and drew him close. Friedrich tried to catch his breath. Good morning! Aren't you happy to see me? Yes, I am happy to see you. Come! He guided Friedrich through the factory gates. I'm moving over to your father's table today. We'll be side by side. Is that agreeable? Uncle Gunter was his usual jovial self, and it steadied Friedrich. Of course, he said, it is what I'd hoped. As he and Uncle Gunter crossed the cobblestone square, Friedrich could feel his heart beat, his heart and breathing calm. The towering buildings, the stone paths, and the arched 
passageways all meant safety. And the fat water tower, a stodgy obelisk standing sentry over the entire enclave, was his guardian in disguise. Part of him wished he could stay and work at the factory forever. The other part of him wished his life had taken a different course, that he'd been a boy who went to real school, had friends his own age, and an ordinary, unremarkable face. But fate had stepped in his path, and when he was only eight years old, he became the youngest and smallest apprentice in the biggest harmonica factory in the world. End of chapter two.